Hello and welcome back to our channel. A new episode for AZ104 Microsoft Azure Administrator Certification Exam. Today we are diving into some carefully crafted exam questions complete with explanation to help you understand the core concepts. If you have not watched our previous video, you can check our entire playlist which has approx 100 plus questions. If you are looking for comprehensive AZ104 preparation resources, we have got you covered. Visit our website Tech Cloud Solution where you will find the AZ104 PDF featuring over 400 practice questions to sharpen your skills, an exclusive AZ104 course that mimics the actual certification exam experience including detailed explanation for every question mock test and additional study materials to boost your confidence don't miss out after watching this video visit our websites and grab the ac 104 pdf dumps or enroll in the course to get started this is your chance to supercharge your preparation and achieve your certification goals the link is in the description below question number 21 you have a general purpose v1 storage account named storage account 1 that has a private container named container 1. You need to allow read access to the data inside container 1 but only within a 14 day window. How do you accomplish this? The options are create a stored access policy B create a service SAS C Create a shared access signature and D. Upgrade the storage account to general purpose V2. So the correct answer is C. So basically a shared access signature that is SAS is a URI that grants time limited access to a specific resource in your storage account by setting the appropriate permission and expiry time in the SAS you can allow read access to the data in container 1 for a 14 day period. Now how to create a SAS? So you can generate SAS token using Azure Portal, Azure CLI or Azure PowerShell to generate a SAS token with the desired permission and in this question it is read and expiry time that is 14 days. After you generate the SAS token, you have to share the SAS URI. Now, the advantages of SAS is that fine-grained control. You can precisely control who can access the data, what actions they can perform and for how long. Then security. By limiting access to a specific time period, you can mitigate security risk. Then flexibility. SAS tokens can be generated for various resources and permission providing flexibility in sharing access. Question number 22. You have an Azure subscription named subscription 1. You have 5 TB of data that you need to transfer to subscription 1. You plan to use an Azure import or export job. What can you use as the destination of the imported data? The options are an Azure Cosmos DB database, B Azure Blob storage, C Azure Data Lake store, and D Azure File Sync storage sync service. So the correct answer is Azure Blob storage. So Azure import or export service is used to securely import large amounts of data to Azure Blob storage and Azure files by shipping disk drives to an Azure data center. This service can also be used to transfer data from Azure Blob storage to disk drives and ship to your on-premises sites. Data from one or more disk drives can be imported either to Azure Blob storage or Azure files. Question number 23. You have an Azure subscription that contains the virtual machine shown in the following table. So it is given as name, public IP SKU connected to and status. We have VM1 and VM2. VM1 
public IP is none and VM2 public IP is P6. Then it is connected to VNet1 subnet1 for VM1 and for VM2 it is connected to VNet1 and subnet2. VM1 is stopped whereas VM2 is running. You deploy a load balancer that has the following configuration. Now the configuration of the load balancer is given as name is LB1, type is internal and SKU is standard and virtual network VNet1. You need to ensure that you can add VM1 and VM2 to the backend pool of LB1. Solution You create a basic SKU public IP address, associate the address to the network interface of VM1 and then start VM1. Does this meet the goal? And the options are true and false. So the correct answer is false. So you can only attach virtual machines in the same region and that have a standard SKU public IP configuration or no public IP configuration. All IP configuration must be on the same virtual network. Now question number 24. For the question number 24, scenario is same but the solution given here as you create a standard SKU public IP address associate the address to the network interface of VM1 and then stop VM2. Does this meet the goal? The options are true and false. So the correct answer for this question is also false. So the explanation is same as you can only attach virtual machines in the same region that have a standard SKU public IP configuration or no public IP configuration. All IP configuration must be on the same virtual network. If this video is adding value to your learning, consider supporting the channel by liking and subscribing. Now let's move on. Question number 25. So for question number 25, scenario is same, but here the solution is given as you create two standard public IP addresses and associate a standard SKU public IP address to the network interface of each virtual machine. Does this meet the goal? And the options are true and false. So the correct answer is false. To add a new standard SKU public IP address to VM2, first you need to disassociate the existing basic IP address. Question number 26. You have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure virtual machine named VM1. VM1 runs a financial reporting app named App1 that does not support multiple active instances. At the end of each month, CPU uses for VM1 peaks when App1 runs. You need to create a scheduled run book to increase the processor performance of VM1 at the end of each month. What task should you include in the run book? The options are add the Azure Performance Diagnostics agent to VM1, B modify the VM size property of VM1, C add VM1 to a scale set, D increase the virtual CPU quota for the subscription, and E add a desired state configuration extension to VM1. So the correct answer is B that is modify the VM size property of VM1. So you need to resize the VM to meet the demand. Question number 27. You manage a virtual network named VNet1 that is hosted in the West US region. Two virtual machines named VM1 and VM2 both running Windows server are on VNet1. You need to monitor traffic between VM1 and VM2 for a period of 5 hours. As a solution, you propose to create a connection monitor in Azure Network Watcher. Does this solution meet the goal? And the options are true and false. So the correct answer is true. So the connection monitor capability in Azure Network Watcher monitors communication at a regular interval and informs you of reachability, latency, and network topology changes between the VM and the endpoint. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी एट यू हैव एन एजोर सब्सक्रिप्शन यू नीड टू ट्रांसफर थर्टी फोर टी बी ऑफ डेटा फ्रॉम एन ऑन प्रेमिस विंडोज ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन सर्वर टू योर एजोर स्टोरेज अकाउंट यू नीड टू इंश्योर डेट द डेटा ट्रांसफर हैज जीरो इम्पैक्ट ऑन द नेटवर्क प्रिजर्व योर एग्जिस्टिंग ड्राइव एंड इज द फास्टेस्ट एंड मोस्ट सिक्योर मेथड वट शुड बी योर फर्स्ट स्टेप द ऑप्शन आर ए स्टार्ट एन इम्पोर्ट जॉब वाय द अजोर पोर्टल बी ऑर्डर एन अजोर डेटा बॉक्स वाय द अजोर पोर्टल सी ओपन अ टिकट विथ माइक्रोसॉफ्ट सपोर्ट एंड डी प्रिपेयर योर हार्ड ड्राइव यूजिंग द डब्ल्यू ए इम्पोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट टूल फॉर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन द करेक्ट आंसर इज बी so the microsoft azure data box cloud solution lets you send terabytes of data into and out of azure in a quick inexpensive and reliable way now the incorrect answer are start an import job via the azure portal so this is required for disk shipment that does not support the volume of data in the question then open a ticket with microsoft support microsoft support not required prepare your hard drives using the wa import export tool this is required for disk shipment that does not support the volume of data in the question question number 29 you have an azure subscription that contains the storage accounts shown in the following exhibit you can refer the screenshot it is given as we have Contoso 101, 102, 103, 104 is the storage account, and the kind is given as V2 storage, blob storage, file storage, and the resource group and the location is given. Now the question it says, in which storage accounts you can use the archive access tier? The options are Contoso 101 only, B Contoso 104 only, C. Contoso 101 or Contoso 103 only, and D Contoso 101, 102 or 103. Whereas in option E, it is 101, 102, 103 and 104. So the correct answer is C. That is Contoso 101 and 103 only. So object storage data tiering between hot, cool and archive is supported in blob storage. and general purpose v2 question number 30 you have an azure subscription that contains the storage account shown in the following exhibit you can refer the screenshot and the question it says in which storage account you can create a premium file share the options are contoso 101 only b 104 c 101 and 104 only d 101 102 104 only and e 101 102 103 and 104 only so in this question you have to create a premium file share so the correct option is contoso 104 only so file storage accounts file only storage accounts with premium performance characteristics recommended for enterprise or high performance scale application so only contoso 14 is of file storage account types i hope these tips and tricks help you feel more confident for your exam and don't forget you can download the pdf and take a real exam simulation on our websites check the link in the comment section if you found this helpful like share and subscribe for more in depth exam prep and let me know in the comment how your preparation is going see you in the next one